Hi, my name is Dylan, and today we are going to continue our series of videos about importing miniatures into Tabletop Simulator. And in this video, we're going to cover uh, using Blender, it's a piece of free 3D software, to modify the miniature and uh, kind of get it ready to be imported into Tabletop Simulator. So, with no further ado, I'm going to go down here and uh, start up Blender. Again, Blender is free. You can just Google Blender and uh, download it and install it. All right, we just want a general file. And this is the, uh, the starting things in Blender. Whenever you create a new Blender file, you have this cube, you've got a light, and you've got a camera. We need none of these things. So I'm going to click on the light, hit the delete key to delete it. Same with the camera. Clicked on them and deleted them, and the cube. Goodbye cube, clicked on him and deleted the cube as well. You'll see up here we have uh, some orthogonal views, right? These are also, you have hotkeys with the number pads to use these, right? So if we want to view things from the Y axis, from the X axis, or from the Z axis, you know, looking straight down, right? We can use this. We're going to use the, we will use those momentarily. Uh, we need to import our wizard though. So, we're, all right, going up to file, going to import obj and let's uh, click around here again method to my madness I swear up here fantasy humans wizard and here we go and he came in all sideways there's a reason this happened because I didn't use the correct import settings. So let me just delete them and let's do that again. So that's a good lesson, right? It's a, a lesson in what not to do. I'm gonna go to import, go to object. Let's go to the wizard. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I have some presets up here. So I'm gonna do my uh, presets. And this is negative X forward, Z up. That's the, uh, the important part of the presets. Uh, that we're looking at. There's some other settings under geometry, but I think those are just the defaults. This is what makes the model um, sort of right side up, essentially, right? It's kind of translating what 3DF Zephyr, Zephyr <laughs> the other software, thinks is right side up to what Blender thinks is right side up, right? That's how I think of it anyway. So we'll click the import button. Okay, our wizard is imported. We can see that. This is the the mesh, right, or the, I don't know what we call this, like the solid view of the uh, the mesh, and you can see how it doesn't have a heck of a lot of detail compared to the original miniature. The texture, as I said in the other video, really does a lot of the work. Up here I can change my viewport option to uh, viewport shading. That'll bring in the texture and let us kind of see what he really looks like. Um, what we're here to do though is get his feet on the ground, right? If he was oddly rotated or something, we, we could fix that here also. Um, but since he's pretty clean, nice and, uh, and well oriented, um, we don't have a lot of work to do really. We just need to get him lowered. So to make that a little easier, I'm going to click on the uh, orthogonal view here. Let's look at the Y. Look at him from the Y axis. So this is as if we are right on that Y axis, looking straight at the at the model, right? And we just need to lower him. I'm gonna use my mouse button here to scroll and zoom in a bit. I'm gonna click on uh, the wizard. I'm gonna hit G for grab, I guess. Then I'm going to hit Z to lock the movement to the Z axis. And then I'm going to whoop, do that again. G, Z, I'm just moving him down. Looks pretty good, right? So his feet are on the ground. Uh, that's what we are here to do. And he is almost perfectly centered. So I'm sort of panning and rotating around, I should say, not panning, but rotating. I'm doing that by holding down my middle mouse button. Uh, let's look at him from the Z axis. Looks great, actually. I'm gonna, maybe I'll just inch him back a little bit along. Uh, this x-axis here. So again, hit G, going to hit X, and then I'm just going to move him 
to here and, oop, and then rotate around a little bit uh, looks pretty good so there's a lot to blender I mean you could make a Pixar movie in blender I don't know how to do that <laughs> I don't know how to make a Pixar movie I can do some basic stuff if you want to learn more about it and I suggest that you do really uh, check out the blender guru on YouTube uh, and do his donut tutorial honestly I went through I don't know three or four levels of the donut tutorial it covers a lot of stuff that you don't need to know for this right because he's kind of more of a, a CG uh, artist right so he's trying to make this well not trying he successfully <laughs> creates uh, these realistic uh, images right in uh, in blender uh, which are really amazing but um, it, it, he gets into things like the uh, <clears throat> shaders and renderers and and whatnot which you don't need to know right you just need to put the guy's feet on the ground and do what I'm about to do which is set his uh, origin right so um, again if we weren't clicked on him we need to make sure we are clicked on him to select him right click and set origin to 3d cursor this little uh, thing <laughs> this little uh, um, cursor right uh, with a little uh, uh, ring and the little uh, cross there and the nice orange dot in the center that's the 3d cursor setting the origin the origin I don't know if you can imagine like the uh, the model himself here this guy um, he has his own oh I don't know grid address there's probably there's probably a better like word for it but we're, we're telling it like where is 0.0.0, .0 for this model right where are the where do the coordinates begin um, for him and this is important because later we're going to line up a collider with this guy right we want to make sure that the, the collider and this model like their origins are the same um, and it, it'll make more sense when we do it I think but um, here we go this is about all we have to do I've got this little white dot here maybe if I want to obsess about that um, I could go in here and fix this but um, let's go in and uh, fix this in the texture shading so I'm gonna go to texture paint let's zoom on in there's that white dot we don't like or I've decided that we don't like it I want to hit F to change my brush size and we just move the mouse right we can make this smaller uh, right about like that click on our color palette uh, click on the eyedropper let's get hmm let's get this color here and then we're just going to kind of it's awfully gray um, let's see if we can lighten that up a little bit yeah I don't know if this is better or worse I'm just clicking in there yeah it might look better maybe it's a little less noticeable I don't know but this is something you can do you could really touch up your models and I have another ones quite a bit uh, with the texture paint here but um, I'm not gonna do too much work on this guy because I think he looks pretty good what I'm going to do though what I need to do to save that little change to save that little bit of painting that I did I need to save the texture right so if I modify it here I don't do anything it actually hasn't um, it hasn't uh, saved the actual texture file the texture file is actually a JPEG right in that folder this is something that was saved when we created the file over in 3df Zephyr so uh, we need to save that I'm gonna go up to image let's click on save right and so now that texture is saved I'm gonna go up at the top go back to our layout mode well I forgot a step so we have to jump in here and uh, <laughs> insert this back in into our video uh, I do apologize for this I forgot to decimate the wizard so what I am doing I'm just clicking on our wizard and I'm going down here to um, add modifier and decimate let me just I had started this so let me I'm sorry let me let me X out of those things start fresh uh, again clicked on our wizard add modifier 
looking for decimate. And I'm going to scroll this down. I'm looking down here where it says uh, vertices, faces, triangles. I'm going to go down until I have uh, less than 20,000 uh, triangles and faces here. Down About this much down here. All right, this looks good. I'm going to click on Apply. And there we go. We don't see any real loss of uh, quality on this guy. Again, like I said before, the texture uh, does all of the work. So now, now that we have done that, now that we have properly decimated our wizard, uh, we are going to go up here and export him. Uh, get an OBJ. And let's look at... Use my presets, but these are the settings you need though, right? We see Z forward, Y up. This is so the tabletop simulator knows which way is up for the wizard. And you have a couple settings I believe that you have to have down here. Triangulate faces I think might not be a default, but in any case, uh, these settings should work for you. And I've done this before, and that's how I, I found out that I went astray, but uh, Let's click on export. It's going to overwrite my uh, my previous file, which is okay for me. There we go. And that's it. All right, so that's just some really simple, simple stuff in Blender. I might do another video covering something a bit more advanced in Blender. Spears, if you try this on any guys who have spears or javelins or any sort of long, thin, Thing, right with photogrammetry you might find that the spears end up all wavy and weird right so you might want to replace the spears you might want to get really creative and start swapping out shields or weapons or what have you right you can you can modify anything sometimes it's just easier sometimes it's almost easier to paint another miniature <laughs> right than it might be to to make something for from scratch in 3d right uh, I might do a video that covers some more advanced kind of modding, right? Or uh, blending, I guess we should say, of, uh, of a model that has more imperfections, right? This guy is looking pretty good. Okay, well, thank you for watching. And um, again, I'll catch you in the next video. Next video, I will cover the actual importing a model into uh, Tabletop Simulator and also talk a little bit about colliders. Maybe we'll We'll be back in Blender making a, uh, a collider uh, to use with this guy. And I'll talk about the default collider and, and why it's bad.